Good afternoon, people. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to uh, part two of how to make a basic junk journal start to finish. So yesterday we were decorating signatures, just a little bit of decoration, a little bit of um, stamping and stenciling, etc. And stenciling these really, I think, lovely signature covers. We're not doing the cover of the journal quite yet. I just want to carry on a little bit and see how fat these signatures get. So then I'll know how wide to make the spine of my cover. Morning, Debbie. Morning, Deborah. Morning, Regina. Hi, Lynn. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It's really nice of you. Um, so I carried on with some of my homework, although I must admit I didn't get it all done. Sorry. Uh, I did stitch around all my pages and uh, I'm quite pleased with how they turned out. And I did add my lace, as I said I was going to do. I added two in each half of each signature. So each signature has got four pieces of lace tucking out, sticking out the side like that. So each one's the same. I didn't choose the same page on each uh, just sort of randomly show some pages that weren't sort of next to each other. Um, the music page, I must have done it on the back of that, I think. I did put some lace on the music page and actually it sort of strengthened it up, the, the stitching and the lace has strengthened that up a little bit, which I'm pleased about because it was very, very fragile. And I did my... Uh, snippet strip which turned out okay I think I quite like it I put some of that this avocado dyed um, I'll call it gauze we all know it's a bandage but I'll call it gauze it sounds a bit better uh, underneath it and then I put some lace along the, the back so that's what the back looks like that's the card that I used um, and this is the broad lace that I used so it's, it's looking nice, I think, and ready to go. The thing that I failed on uh -uh, was uh, doing my clusters. I, just, I had a bad head yesterday and I just couldn't face doing the clusters. So we haven't got any. I've got one, one that I did, and that's, that's all I've got. Um, however, I don't think we're going to need them today, or I can make sure that we don't need them today. I have finally plucked up the strength and courage to cut into my beautiful book, Ireland, Diary of a Year on Easdale. It, I actually think I prefer this one to, to Edith. And that's saying something because I love Edith. There's just beautiful, beautiful images in it. Um, and and of, I mean, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Uh, and of different things, not just flowers. You know, there's lots of birds. Uh, there's some sea life, butterflies, um, you know, the berries and really autumnal, that one. There's lots, lots of really interesting. Uh, look at that. That's lovely. So there's plenty in there. Oh, look at the little blue tit on the future. That's beautiful. Um, I think there's enough in here to keep us going for a couple of journals, I would have thought. So I've started at the beginning. Wow, oh, that's a crowded place, isn't it? Crowded page. Um, that's nice as well. Oh, and that. Really nice stuff in here. Really, really, really lovely. So I, as you can see, I've cut some bits out. It was really difficult for me. <laughs> I found it very, very difficult, I must be honest. I, I wanted to keep the book intact, but that's why it was bought. It was bought for journaling, <coughs> and uh, so it's chopped up. Right, this is the center of one of my signatures. And this is the center of the other signature. And in the book, there are these um, big round images, which are lovely. Robin, obviously, and a red squirrel. Red squirrels in this country are quite rare. Uh, we have them in this county, we're very lucky. But it doesn't quite fit onto one page. 
It's just sticking over the edge there. I could get away with it if I did it on one of the pages that has lace on it, like that. Um, but I've decided that I'm going to put one in the center of each signature and I'm going to either stitch or glue it down there and then this will be a tuck spot. I need to back it in something otherwise it won't, nothing will stay in. So I think we'll do that first. That's our first job of the day. And then we'll have somewhere to put some tags. I did leave this on um, because it sort of came as part of the, the robin, but I don't I don't think I want it. I think it's going to be more of a nuisance, more of a hindrance than a help. So I'll just chop that off. I just left it on until I could work out where I was going to put it. I'll save those. You never know. You might need those sometime. So I'm going to back that onto something fairly firm. Um, maybe... I don't know, 160 will probably do, I think. I think that will do. So I'll stick that on. So this is us actually setting out to put something in our journal. It's our first, first thing we're putting in, so it's quite exciting. I'm quite excited about it. I don't think I'm going to have room for the other one. No, just by millimetres it doesn't fit. <laughs> so another sheet. So I hope you've all done your homework diligently. <laughs> I know these are randalls, you know, in the book, but if you have an image of anything whatever the topic that you're dealing with obviously cut a circle out of it you know that was already done for me the circle but you can cut a circle out of anything you like anything that goes with your theme can i can you tell me what your themes are give me a give me a clue as to what you're doing are you all going to try and do nature or some of you doing shabby chic or anything else Pop this one down here. I mean, there's as many topics, almost as many topics as there are words. You know, you can do fishing, knitting, crochet, sewing, cooking, uh, tennis, golf. You think of it, you can do it. So that's that there. I hope that that is um, going to be strong enough for our tuck. If it's not, we'll put another bit on the back. So I'm going to cut around here quite carefully. Actually, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking that I quite, would quite like to sew around it. And I don't want to take the time up on the live to sew around it. So I'll, I'll literally place it where it's going and I'll uh, sew around it when I'm not live. So it'll be all ready for you next time. Can you feel the concentration? I'm not very good at cutting things out. I'm rubbish at fussy cutting. Has to be a technique that I'm just not aware of, I think. So there, I'll I'll, I'll keep that because that could be useful in the grand scheme of things. So that needs inking round. It's nice though, isn't it? So I'm using for this project, as you know, I told you yesterday, a vintage photo, the distressing vintage photo. I quite like this to be quite dark around the edge. 
It makes it stand out more, I think. I know in other journals I've used different colours. I, I used uh, pink for one of my journals and, and I liked it for that journal. It was right for that journal. But I think for this one, being a naturey sort of journal, we need the brown. So I'll cut this one out as well, seeing as, that's, seeing as we're here. I think I'm making the right hash of this. I'm actually cutting the paper as well as the backing paper. But there you go. Eh? This Robin looks very wintry. Looks like he's on snow. And I did actually start at the beginning of the book, which was January. So I'm guessing that... Uh, that's where, where the pictures come from. All right, there we go. Keep that bit, keep all your bits. It's really awkward being organized when you're a junk journaler because you end up with bits of this and bits of that. No, I'm gonna keep this, but where? And then where do you keep them that you're actually gonna find them again? That, you know, that's another thing. I've got loads of stuff. But I, I can't find it. Regina, you looked very tidy when you showed me around your studio space. Uh, it looked really tidy. Problem is, I've got so much. Mr. Fixit keeps going to charity shops and finding me more in things like categories that I don't have a draw for. It's a non-categorised drawer. Right, so there's our two uh, nice round dolls. As I say, I'm, I'm definitely going to sew round dolls, I think, is the way forward with those. So there's Squirrel Nutkins there. He'll go there. Um, so I'll glue him down, right down the middle, fold him over, glue him down the middle, and also put a, you know, bring the glue a little bit onto the side so as we have actually got a tuck that we can tuck things behind. So if we were going to make a, um, a journaling card or a tag to go in there, we'd need something this sort of size. Now this is thicker card again. Uh, do you remember what thickness that is? Is it 320? 300? Three, yeah, thicker than that, isn't it? Three twenty ish. I think it's three twenty, uh, and that's what I'm going to make my tags and journaling cards out of. Maybe even a slightly larger one than that, actually. Maybe something like that. That would look nice there. And when you take it away, you've still got this really nice decoration on the page. Yeah, I like that. So I'll work on this one first. Um, but I've cut four tags out to work on. And if I can get through them all, that's well and good. And if I can't, well, I can't. So I'm going to put a piece of uh, kitchen towel down because I don't want to get ink on here. Uh, hi, Debbie. Hi, hiya, Jen. Morning. Um, I'm trying to figure out what you're doing, Regina. You seem to be doing too many journals is what you're doing. That's what I think. Focus on one. Um, it's too easy to get distracted when you've got two or three. Focus on one and see if you can get that one finished. Um, my next one will be some nature flowers and eclectic since that's my style. Very nice, Debbie. Natalie, I have an order for a floral journal in blues and pinks, which I'm working on while I watch. Oh, blues and pinks. Nice. Hi, ladies and Mr. F, says Hilda. Hi, Hilda. Um... <laughs> All right, I see, Regina. It was... So, I am going to use uh, this Harlequin um, stencil. And I know it kind of doesn't have anything to do with nature, but I like it because of that. Um, and for this, you could use acrylic paint. Acrylic paint would be really good for this 
Actually, I might use acrylic paint, to be honest. The thing about, if you're going to use ink, when you put water or glue over it, it's... Um, what we're talking about, does anybody know? Um, it'll reactivate the ink, so you won't have a very good definition. That's what I'm trying to say. So just be careful what you use it for your first layer. That's what I would say. So I only need it a little bit. I'm just going to stencil with it. This is just acrylic, ordinary acrylic paint. Um, and it is uh, raw sienna. But yellow ochre or anything like that, would anything in the yellow family at all, bright yellow if you want. Um, I'm just using that. What am I going to put it on with? Um, I think I've wrecked all my dabbers. Uh, what are you going to I could use a booby. Uh, let's see, you've got to fix it off to see what you can see. Yeah, that's fine. I have got so much stuff on my desk, honestly. It's driving me bonkers. That's lovely. Yeah, these big foam dobbers that I use I did have small ones as well but uh, I didn't wash them out and I wrecked them but they're dead cheap really really cheap um, I'm just going to wet that a little bit just makes the paint work better and just wring it out and just pick up some paint this paint is very very thick it's ages since I used it so load your load your dobber up Hopefully that'll be okay. So I'm just going to come the full width of that, but in a a diagonal across the the tag, like that. Let's have a look and see. Oh, maybe a bit more. We are going to be covering this up later on, so you're going to be wondering what on earth I'm doing, but we're not going to cover all of it up. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I might do a little bit at the bottom. Oh, thank you. Look what Mr. Fix it's just brought me. Sponges of all sorts. Marvellous. Just going to do a little bit at the bottom. This you might not see, I don't know, but uh, just in case. Blimey, this paint is thick. Let's see if we can get it moving. You know, oh, that's too too wet. If you get it too wet, it's going to creep under your stencil and not do you any favours at all. There's a nice happy medium. Look, see, because that was too wet. It's crept under my stencil. So now we're def definitely going to have to cover that. That's a bit of a faux pas. It's the polite way of putting that. Right, let's see if we can get this paint sorted. Not too wet, not too dry. Goldilocks paint, just right. Oh, that might be a bit wet as well. No, nearly. I've only got four to do, so... I should be all right, I think. That's all right, that'll dry fine. Dry perfectly, in fact. So I've got four, I've cut out four uh, tags, which could be tags or journaling cards at the moment, because I haven't cut any angles in the top. I'll come further over with this one. Um, and there's kind of varying sizes. I'll go through the sizes with you in a minute. Let's get rid of some of that water off there. So this is just going to be a background, thankfully, because it's a really bad, poor bit of stenciling. That's what it is. But there we are. 
if I really really dislike it I could turn it over and have a go on the other side but I'm not that fussed that'll be fine um, I'm going to hang on to that because I need it don't need that anymore thank you very much all that actually I'll live with what I've done I'll live with my poor stencils Sponge, of I could, yeah. This one, where the paint was really thick, has worked out really well, and where it went wet, it's absolute rubbish. So, what I'm going to do now is put some. Um, I've got. Remember, I showed you yesterday that I'd made up some um, mister sprays with some dye, um, actually, stamp dye out of stamp pads. Uh, and I've made a green one as well. So, I'm hoping. Yeah, look at that, it's beautiful. So I'm just going to spray these from a height and just tinge them green. Can you see that? It's lovely. It's, it's you know, I keep saying this, but it's just a whisper. There we go. It's just got a little bit more on it. It's nice. It's very nice. There. I'm going to go back to that first one. I'm feeling brave now. <laughs> I'm feeling brave. There we are. That looks a bit. There we are. So I've got lots on there, um, but it looks gorgeous and it's absolutely everywhere. It's all over the shop. Anyway, there we go. I'll treat myself to some new kitchen towel. I'll do it behind Mr. Fix It's back because he thinks I'm profligate with it. <gasps> I'm having two sheets. Right, so the next thing that we do, well, the next thing I'm going to do is dry these quickly with a, a heat gun and hopefully get that ink and acrylic to dry and to set. I haven't used this green before. I don't know if it moves when you put water on it. Time will tell, eh? Sorry about it, it's not very exciting, but I think if we've got any chance of setting that green, it's with a bit of heat. Like paint dry. It is indeed watching paint dry. So I've got some nice backgrounds. This is nice, nice for us to work on. And I'll give you the measurements in a sec. It's more the green I'm worried about getting really dry than the the uh, brown. Because I think if I heat set it, it might not move. That's the thought. It might just all move. Don't know. Right, let's say that we're done with that. The book. Uh, sorry. Deborah bought the book. You bought the book. I liked it so much, I bought the book. Right, this one measures um, seven and a quarter by four and a half. This one measures six by four. This one measures six by four. And this one measures six by three. That's just, you, you know, you can do them any sort of measurement. This one I think will be nice to go down the side of our squirrel. Um, so I'll work on it first. I mean, it may, yeah, it's going to be easier if I work on all of them together, I think. Actually, move my bits over. So the next thing I want to do is add gesso to it. And as I said yesterday, if you haven't got any gesso, don't, don't rush out and buy gesso. Um, just use emulsion, you know, if you've got magnolia emulsion or you've got cream emulsion or white emulsion, that will um, do the job perfectly fine. So, you know, don't rush out and be buying expensive gesso. I just, I have gesso because I do acrylic art um, and you use that as a base. 
Right, where's my paintbrushes? Here we go. So this is just an old paintbrush. Don't use your best paintbrushes either. So it's time to... Actually, what I'm going to do is... Oh, yeah. I'm going to use a bit of greaseproof paper. I don't know what you call it in the States. We, we put this... Say you're baking biscuits. We put this down on the tray to stop them sticking to the tray. It's that sort of slightly waxy stuff. Deli paper will do as well. Crinkle it up. I'm aware I'm making a loud noise. Crinkle it up. A lot. And then use part of that to pick your paint up with. And you'll get a much nicer sort of uneven covering. You could use a brayer to put it on. You could use a bank card, shop store card, whatever. It's a bit too much there perhaps, but I do want that bottom bit quite um, quite a lot of gesso on there. So I have a purpose for that. I don't think that green's coming off. It might be. So that one's all right. I want to get the gesso on here, but I don't really want to make it look like paintbrush marks. If you know what I mean. This is a trick, painting on your greaseproof paper, that I learnt from Artie Mays. Um, that woman is a wealth of knowledge and she paints onto her greaseproof paper and then sort of just stamps off of it. And it, it's a really nice result that you get. So you can still see the stencils that we've done. You can still see that green that we sprayed. And we're covering it with gesso, partly, partly covering. really kind of look too tidy really I guess um, is what we're doing <laughs> I'm trying to paint in a very untidy untidy way I might put more on that piece I don't think I've got enough for what I've got planned for part two or three or four it might be actually maybe. Because the stenciling was one. Well, if you count the coffee, coffee dye <laughs> as well. This, this paper's had quite a lot done to it, these uh, tags. But this is your homework, guys. It's your homework for next week. I'm going to put some up there. Need a bit more down there. Put it on. Pull it off again. This one definitely needs more. Ooh, not that much, I don't think. I think that green is coming off ever so slightly, but I'm not really worried. It's not. It's not wrecking everything. Workout guys, it's a workout. Anybody telling me what 
Yeah, and so music here. Well, you can sing. Sing to yourself. I'm not singing. That, that would drive you away in droves. But at least I'm feeling better today. I had a headache yesterday, as I said. So I was miserable and grouchy. Right, so there we are. I'm quite happy that those have got um, gesso on them, as have I. <laughs> it's going to take more than a wet wipe. <laughs> That's fine, we'll get that off at a later date. Soap and water. Right, so I think I've probably finished with the gesso um, for now, at any rate. I'll pop that in water. don't want to ruin a good brush. And put my gesso away off my desk. Get rid of something off my desk, it's just encroaching. Right, so I don't need this anymore either. So the next thing I'm going to do is a bit of watercolour on them. But actually, I do need to get these dry again, guys. So sorry, uh, Regina, start singing now. Knock my head off, Dad. Why not? Might as well benefit that. We're getting there very close actually very very close all this painting and everything on one side will make them curl um, you just have to eventually flatten them out again either put them under a pile of books you know uh, some weight or whatever or if you just keep feeling them and bending them back the other way you'll be all right I think that I think they're dry enough for the next for what's coming next. Now, there's a couple of ways of approaching this next uh, this next bit. I've got things called Jane Davenport colour sticks, um, and they come in two sets, uh, twenty four colours in total. They're lovely. I really like them. I love using them, but. Well, I will say they are the same as Tim Holtz Distress Crayons and uh, Faber-Castell Gelatos. So if you've got any of those, this is the time to get them out. They're wonderful. I adore them. <coughs> However, if you don't have those, don't for heaven's sake go out and buy them. I mean, you'll love them and you get loads of use out of them. So yeah, go on, Regina. I'll get them. Um, but the alternative is to use watercolour. And this is... I do quite a lot of watercolours, but this is the cheapest watercolour set that I've got. Uh, I think it's actually two sets put together, but, um, you know, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it works perfectly for what we want. So I'll, I'll do one. Can we know it? Yeah, the, the, it doesn't say it, but they are, I might say it on the top. Buy a company called Koinor, K-O-H-I-N-O-O-R. Um, I can't remember now the price of them, but they are really inexpensive. So there's my greens there. The watercolours, of course. So I'll do I'll do one I'll do two in each and then you'll see see what I'm talking about. So I'm just I'm gonna spray these. With watercolours, it's a good idea if a few minutes before you're gonna use them, you spray them. It kind of gets the pigment going i didn't spray these so so there's my nice green I'll just make a little well of it here doing this on a on a paper plate that's a bit absorbent so it's not brilliant but um you get the you'll get the drift i 
and then once again I need something to transfer that um, from here to here and for that I'm going to use just a bit of clean film which works perfectly but was put on this earth to annoy me it, it oh obviously heard me cussing it Saran wrap, isn't it, in the States? Yes, uh, saran wrap, I think, but you know what I mean. The stuff that you wrap your sarnies in when you're going for a picnic. And just pick pick a little bit up, and we're just going to randomly put that on. The reason that you're using cling film or uh, something similar is you don't want brush marks on it at this stage. I'm going to leave this uh, bit down the bottom white for a reason which will become apparent to you soon. So I hope you can see that. It's just a little bit of green. I could make, make it more green actually. Could you fetch me a saucer or something? Because this is, my plate's eating it. <laughs> Which is no good at all. Hungry plate. It's a hungry plate. It's normally me that's hungry. I'm not hungry today. I had a sandwich. Just not long ago, I had a sandwich. I didn't want one because I was getting ready and Mr. Fix It made me eat it. Because <laughs> I'm diabetic, you see, so I really should be eating properly. Marvellous palette. How perfect. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of water into one of these wells and get some of this pigment, mix it through. Look at that, it's much better. Much better. Actually, I'm going to do this to all four. I really like it. I'm doing it to all of them. Hang on to your hat. She's changing her plans. Try and get as much off the brush as you can. It's pigment, you've paid for it. You might as well try and use it. That's, that's it. Might need more than that, but we'll see. We'll see as we go along. Yeah, that's a bit more daring, isn't it? That says I'm here loud and proud. So you see, each layer that we add, it just adds interest and intrigue. I don't know about the intrigue. I just started that. I don't think it's intriguing. <laughs> yeah, I like this, but I am also going to use the Jane Davenport as well. And you'll see what I'm going to do with that in a minute. If you followed me for a while, you'll know full well what I'm going to do with it. Because I've done it before. So if you've been checking out my back catalogue of videos, there's quite a few on there now. Enough to get you through a bad cold, I would have thought, lying on the settee watching them. They're not all as long as this. <laughs> no, some are longer. Some are longer. <laughs> yes, yeah, some are longer. Some of your painting comes in ten parts. Yeah, some of the acrylic painting that comes in. Yeah, that's that's long. And, and yeah, it's not junk journaling. So if you're not into painting, I wouldn't advise watching it because it's quite, every brush stroke is talked about, to be honest. Right, now if you wanted to, for a bit more depth and interest, you could use another green as well, a darker green, perhaps. I'm not going to because we're never going to get finished otherwise. And I, I like those. I think they're nice and bright. All things bright and beautiful. I am, however, tempted to put a yellow on there. Yeah, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. I'm going to do it. I can't help myself. Not that one. Uh, they're a bit dull. Not that one. Yeah. Let's mop that green up. Right, so um, same procedure. I'm just, I'm just going to wet that, wet that. Put some water in the in the pal in the well of the palette, 
I don't care how clean or otherwise my brush is because um, it'll only be contaminated with green which isn't going to be a bad thing and I'm mixing these two yellows one looks like cad yellow and the other looks like lemon yellow um, but I'm just mixing them up she says she's going to look at your videos. Oh. She also does watercolour painting. Oh dear, Hilda. I love watercolour painting. Right, so. No no expense spared here. I'm going to use the same bit of cling film. <laughs> um, I'm just going to kind of turn it over a bit and wrinkle it up again. Um. <laughs> there we go. Wrinkle, 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 wrinkle. And start with the first one. It's on the theory that it should be the driest. So into my yellow. Oh yeah, look at that. It's so nice. So all these things that when you look at them and you think, you know, they're really nice. It's generally because it's taken ages to make them. You know. It's very rare to get something that, that's sort of a scroll stopper just on sort of one cut, a one cut wonder. You generally have to work at it, guys. It's a bit like life, isn't it? If you want something that's uh, worthwhile, you've got to put the hours in. But I'm not suggesting that you do uh, your tags like this, you can do them any, any way you like. Your journal, your rules. And I'm glad we put the yellow on there. It's really, uh, it's really brightened it up. And it's given it just a bit more depth, I feel. There we go. Lovely. Really lovely. So I can give all that to... Oh yeah, I'm showing that to Mr. F. Where's my lid gone? Here. That can go back in the drawer, actually. Hooray! Something's going away. Can I give you that? Yep. That, actually, I'll have the plate back. Sorry, I need it for something else. Right. Mr. Fix has just been to get the... Um, some watercolours that I've done. So, it out of there because of the shine. So, a, just brief a brief interlude here. Some watercolours that I've done. Um, in case you can't tell what they are, the gladiola. Uh, and I painted those. Yeah. I don't know what else there is actually. I think that's it here. Yeah, I think that's uh, and this um, Christmas rose hel uh, heliotrope. So that's that's the only two A threes that I've got in that file. Some have been sold. Some have been hung on the wall. Blah blah. Here's an acrylic there that you've got. Ah, oh, yeah. Complete set of. Here's an acrylic that I did. All the tuition for this is. Uh, on YouTube blow by blow I can tell you every single thing it's like looking out through an old station an old car train carriage thing um, onto that old shed, old barn I enjoyed doing that one right let's get back to the matter in hand so we've done all that now what do we need well I did say I was going to use the Jane Davenport stuff and I am just so you can see what it does so I've got a green it's a nice bright green that might be quite nice um, can you see what I'm at here not really and in this uh, selection we've got that really nice bright orangey yellow mm. they don't all have to be the same of course there's that nice yellow there as well Ooh, might have a go with that first actually these aren't the cheapest things in the world to buy, but I have had mine for quite a long time and they're still, look, there's still loads of them. So uh, you don't 
you don't wear them out too quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the edge. I don't know if this is going to work, show up, I mean. So I'm just going around the edge and the, the very soft waxy crayons is my best. And then I'm just taking my finger and I'm just rubbing that into the middle. So it just blends it all. I'm blending with my finger. Like that. And that's what we end up with. Nice, isn't it? I like that. But just for the sake of um, showing you what things do, I'll move on to uh, the green. This might be our best bet, I think, actually, the green. What I should have said is, if I'm making that into a tag, which I probably will be, I should have done that before I put that yellow round. Uh, so let's, let's cut the corners off that with my trusty uh, credit card. So I'll just cut these off and flip it over and do the same on the other side. Corinne, hello. Your paintings are so wonderful. It's really sweet of you to say so. Thank you. Thanks very much. I am really trying to make it informative. Um, and I know for some people who have been doing junk journals for ages and ages, it might be a little bit beneath you, actually. Um, but I'm aiming this at people who have got the paper, they've got the desire to do it, and they just want to know how to get started. Um, but, you know, the others, the, the others amongst you, you might pick up some little some little bits along the way. So shall I make these into tags or journaling cards? Um, these two I might make into tags, but that I'm going to keep as a journaling card because it's nice and big. I like big journaling cards. You can still ink over this after you've um, used your Jane Davenport on it. And you can still sew around them, of course. So are you guys, are you sewing around your journals or gluing or? Um, for those of you that haven't seen this before and think I'm a bit weird, this is an old credit card of mine, uh, no longer works. And I've cut two angles on it. They don't show up very well, but they are different. And what I do is I line up the edge of the credit card with the edge of the paper and the same at the top. And that will give me that angle there. Now, if you're cutting this by eye, it's really hard to get both sides at the same angle. So just flip it over so you've got the same angle on this side here. Line it up again with the edge and the top. And then you're guaranteed to have the same angle on both sides. So it's just something less to concern yourself with. Um, and you know it's going to be right. It's going to be perfect. So next time you cut up your credit card in the restaurant, keep the bits. Yeah. <laughs> Ask them, can you have the bits back, please? So this time I'm going to use green. And you, you just don't press too hard because you might end up with permanent lines that way. Just lightly, <coughs> excuse me, and then just blend it with your finger. You can use a wet wipe. If, if you put a bit too much on, a wet wipe will certainly take it off for you. But it does blend it as well if you want a softer blend. <coughs> oh, I am sorry. So this just gives us a nice sort of edge to it, but it's also adding interest, I think. So there we are. We've got one that I've done with yellow, one that I've done with green. 
um, I'll ink them in a second so you see what they look like. I'm going to plow on with the green because I quite like that. I like the yellow as well. These are great. If you are looking for old um, videos to watch, there's an old one about making uh, a baseboard and tags for a boho journal. Um, that was great fun to do and I used these for that to, to good effect I think. I don't think I've got any of them left now actually. Um, but I used, because it was boho, I was using turquoise and purple and, you know, groovy colours. You're saying they use ink tents, pencils? Yeah, you can use ink tents. I, I've got ink tents, you can use them. They'll do perfectly well. The pencils or the blocks? The blocks, if you've got blocks, they'd probably be better because you get more down in one go. I'm going to put yellow on this one. But either, they're, they're good. Ink, ink tents is lovely and made not very far away from us. We've been to the factory. The cafe at, at Derwent, the company that make ink tents, is the best cafe ever, 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 bar none. Because you get your coffee or your cake or whatever it is you're having and you sit down and in the middle of the table is a pile of um, pieces of paper and a pot in the middle with loads of ink tense pencils in. So while you're having your coffee, you can sit there doodling with their ink tense and their paper. And if they like it enough, they put it on the wall. <laughs> so everybody who goes in after that can see what you've been doing. So I kind of like that idea. Um, at the moment, with COVID, etc., we're being discouraged from going uh, down into the Lake District because um, it's a real visitors. Get so many visitors, it's very busy. So there we are. That's brightened those up no end, hasn't it? So that's the Jane Davenport. Yeah, you're quite right. You can use ink tons uh, or any watercolor, Albrecht Dura watercolors whatever whatever you've got watercolor itself watercolor will do it i was just i'm trying to show you various things uh not for you to rush out and buy them but just things that are available that if at some stage you want them you know about them that, that's all i'm just I'm trying to educate you guys right i was going to ink around those so you could actually see how It'll show up the um, the colours better. So I'll just give them a quick ink around and about. And then we're going to start. We're nearly up to an hour and I'm, I'm now just going to start something else. But I won't be too long. So there we are. You see when it's inked around just how, how nice that looks. Stands out really nicely. These are nice and bright, aren't they? Vibrant. But, um, oh, I can't remember. Was it Deborah said you were doing a pink and blue uh, journal? No reason why you couldn't use pinks and blues for these tags. It'd be lovely. Actually, Prussian blue is one of my very favourite colours. I love it. Uh, Minnie wants to know, would pastels do the same job? The problem is fixing them. They would do the same job. You could put them on and you could blend them in, but you'd have to use a fixative because otherwise this next step that we're going to do would, um, it, it would just make your pastel wet and disappear it. So you could use pastels for sure, but be sure and fix it. A cheap hairspray will do it. You don't have to go out and buy a fixative. A cheap hairspray, and actually the cheaper, the better uh, hairspray, you could use that. Um, so put your pastels around it, blend it in, spray them over with hairspray, leave them, I would say, for 24 hours, and then, you, yeah, you'll be fine. You'd get away with that. That would be okay. Right, now then, the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of decoupage. Because I promised you I would, therefore I will. So I've got some napkins here. Napkins is another thing that I have um, 
a lot of, let's say. Shall I just say I've got a lot? Leave it at that. I've got loads. I've got an embarrassing amount of napkins. So he would look quite nice there, wouldn't he, on that big journaling tag? So I've already taken the back two layers off. You guys all know to do that. In case you don't, napkins come in three layers, like this. Uh, when you get them out of the packet, they'll have three layers. Some have two, but very rare. And in order to get the backing off, you... Uh, I'll show you. I've got masking tape, that I'll probably do. Because um, sometimes it's the devil's own. You can't get the backing paper off and it drives you demented. So if you just put a bit of um, bit of masking tape down, tear it off, the backing paper comes off with it. So that's one layer. And stick another bit onto there and tear it and you'll get your third, your second layer off, leaving your third layer, the bit that you want with the ink on, all nice and ready for you to use. So there you go. It's quicker than all that oh, fussing around. So where was I? I was dealing with this hair. I'm just going to tear him round roughly till I see where I want him. Try not to leave that much white if you can avoid it. It does kind of sink into the background, but it's better if it's just not there in the first place. Just tear around the ink that you want. There is a technique where you go around it with a wet paintbrush and then tear it. I just think that's a bit of a faff. So I'll do with this one. So what do I need? See, we put the gesso on, <coughs> excuse me, so it's white underneath it. And you'll get a much better result with uh, decoupage if you've got white underneath. Um, I haven't got white underneath all of this. So it's, you know, it's not perfect. It would be more perfect if there was white everywhere. So let's have a look at that. He looks quite nice there, doesn't he? Yeah. Good hair day. <laughs> He's having a good hair day, yeah. <laughs> I could move him across slightly so he's more central. I could move him to there, actually. But then I'm running into all this stuff. Now I'm going to keep him down here. And I just want some room at the bottom to add some stuff. <laughs> so for my decoupage, I'm using a fusion decoupage and transfer gel. Uh, I also have Mod Podge, which I water down. Mod Podge, as it comes out of the pot, is way too sticky. Um, and it you know, tends to tear your napkins if you're not really, really careful. Uh, and a soft brush. So I don't put a decoupage gel down first. I know some of you do. I'm sure you all know how to decoupage. Start from the beginning and brush your way out to the edges. Start from the middle. The beginning, the did beginning. I say? Yeah. Did I say the beginning? Yeah. yeah. Start start at the beginning, guys. That's a good <laughs> way to go. Better than starting at the end. Better than starting it's at easier. the end. Yeah. So you start from the middle and you brush it out. And that way then hopefully you'll brush out all the air that's trapped under that napkin. I know a lot of people that put the glue on the where it's going first. I don't get on with that way. You might. And I'm sure that you're all more accomplished than I am at doing this. So middle again, down to the edge. Getting rid of all those. Because I haven't got any glue on the card itself, if I get any disastrous wrinkles, you can actually lift it up again, which you can't do if you've put glue on your thing first. So that's it, we're nearly all the way around.
just be careful. It's wet tissue. You know, think about it here. It's wet tissue. How strong do you think it's going to be? Not strong. So just be careful. And if you get any wrinkles, actually, I've got a couple of wrinkles in here, which is unusual. Um, but don't panic. Do not panic about wrinkles. I mean, unless it's right through the middle of the hair or something, yeah, then you might want to panic a bit. But what I do is I leave that to let it dry completely. There's there's no point me trying to dry it now with a with a hot air tool because it won't get dry, 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 which is what you need. And when it's really dry, you know, after 24 hours or so, <clears throat> I take a sponge pad like this, a very fine one, and I lay it flat on it and I just gently, gently sand it away. And then it sort of recedes much further into the background. Um, could you pass me one of that whole ensemble over there? Yeah, and, nice. yeah, there should be a hair nice. somewhere. Is there hair? No? Yeah, there's a hair? Oh, there's the hair. This is just bits that I've been messing around with through the week. Getting into a state of preparedness. So this is uh, a hair that I've decoupaged. He's got lumps in him. Um, it was a, this was a horrible glue that I used. Um, but now if I just rub him gently, Don't rub them so much that the tissue comes off, but just gently. And what happens is he just recedes. He just goes into the background and he stops having that funny feel that decoupage things have. And you, if you've got wrinkles, you'll knock the top off the wrinkles and that will make it look old and distressed. It, you know, it won't make it look like a crap job or anything. It'll just add to its feeling of being vintage. So don't worry, all things are fixable. So there we are, he's receded nicely into the background. You, I know you can't feel him, but take it from me, he now feels lovely. So with this fella, we'll wait for him to dry, and we'll do the same thing. But you will need decorating at some stage. But I thought that was going to be today, which is why I was asking you to do your snippety things yesterday. Um, I've lost the one snippet that I did do. <laughs> it's somewhere on this table, but I haven't got a clue where. I thought it was down here. It doesn't matter, really. I was just going to show you what it looked like on it. Mr. Fix, it's come for a snoop to see if he can see it. It, it. it really doesn't matter. You know what it looked like, and it would look very nice down there, I think. Um... Let's put some decoupage on the other ones so they'll be ready for us. Guys, um, I have a question for you. Would you like me to do a live during the week on this journal? Say Wednesday, for example, um, so as you can crack on with it. Or are you really happy with the two days at the weekend and you've got all week then to catch up with it? What do you think? So I've just flattened them a little bit. So for this one, I'm going to use this napkin and it's I've used this a lot in the past. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's like spring flowers and I love it. So there's a nice bit there. And I'm just going to take out. This napkin's absolutely full of, of, of flowers. You've just got to select the bit that you want and tear it out. Bearing in mind, you know, that we will be coming back to add some of our snippety bits to it. And maybe some sari silk, etc, etc. That's really nice. And I want these hyacinths as well. So the whiter you have your background behind this decoupage, 
the more vibrant your decoupage will be. So if you feel that you've got too much on there, you know, Jane Davenport or Ink Tents or anything like that, there's nothing at all stopping you going back and adding more uh, gesso at any stage, just to give you a nice white background for your uh, decoupage. So it's just a little bit there. Sometimes a little bit's all you need. Right, so I think that might look quite nice up there, actually. And then I've got I've got flowers growing upside down here. So I've got my uh, grape hyacinth, which would go nicely up there, maybe a little bit higher up. I've got this big pink flower, and I've also got this little pink flower, which I think is probably going to be sufficient. Like that. And I think that'll be enough because I want to add some of the um, some of the wildlife. We haven't even, you know, our, our book that it broke my heart cutting into. We haven't even used anything from it yet. So, you know, we've got to got to use some of that. So same thing. Just uh, put it down flat and use the gel from the center of the image to the edge. Not too much pressure. And see, it just adds something. It adds niceness to it. Like you weren't in a rush, you just wanted to make it nice. So, I'd love to see you live during the week. Oh, right, okay. And Lynn Wood and Debbie. Oh, okay. Natalie, if I've got time. My time is your time, Natalie. Well, my snippet roll is drying. Good on you, Regina. Um, the, the, yeah, they're coming on, aren't they, Debbie? They're coming on. Where's my... Oh, here. Nearly got through a whole live there, guys, without going, where's my... <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> where's my... So there we are. Don't worry about the bits that are sticking out over the edge. They're much easier to get rid of when they're dry. There's always the danger if you cut them when they're wet that it sort of drags the bit that you you know the bit off the front. So that I mean that's a pretty pretty tag I think. You like it? I hope so. Um, right. Let's just have a quick look at what. I cut out of the book this morning loads of stuff, loads. I cut out loads. Oh, I found my little snippety thing. It's buried under that. Just, just that again for the people yeah, the themselves. book that I am using is Ireland, Diary of a Year on Eastdale. Eastdale is a Scottish island off the west coast of Scotland. And it's just the most gorgeous book. It's got the text in it is fantastic. I love it. And that, and I will use that. I can promise you. Look at those tall stools. It, it, just the images are just, oh, look at that red star. Beautiful. Excuse me. They're absolutely beautiful. I love them. Uh, and it took me ages to pluck up the, the will to cut into it. So I've got this little uh, snippet here. It's a bit too little for any of my uh for any of that where's my snippet roll it's here i'm just wondering if maybe some of that along under my bunny would be nice well it would be nice wouldn't it that would be nice maybe a bit of that goes behind it so it's just yeah that would be really nice i like that course you can choose which section you have <laughs> if you want that nice pink flower <laughs> go for that section it's lovely so I think yeah I think that's gonna look nice um let's let's finish the yeah and that's the little for those of you who were absent yesterday black mark against you for a start um we made these little snippets and it's just a bit of card a bit of this 
which is a gauze bandage. I don't know where to put it, but it's just a gauze bandage. And um, I made it with some avocado stain. There's loads of things on YouTube about avocado stain. So it's just this pretty, comes out that pretty pink. Uh, and then I just stuck some snippets on it like that. So it's ready to use when we need it. And I need to make some more of those. So what have I got? Oh, oh, that looks like a vole or something. I don't know. Fits nicely in there. I'd have to cut that off, but that would be okay. I don't know what you think. Looks quite nice. Let's see what else I've got. I've got these. this nice nest. I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? Everything's blooming nice. Um, that's that's a nice picture. That's the winner at the moment. Let's see what else I've got. I've got that nice heart, but that'll go on a page, I think. Uh, those two. Mm -hmm. This fella. He doesn't stand out too well on there. Uh, I've got this picture of this little cottage. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Little cottage with a chicken. What What are you thinking, guys? What do you like? What do you like? Um, I like them all. That's my That's my problem. I like them all. I've got these daisies. They might go on there quite nicely. Uh, that'll go on a page. And then I've just got pages. I quite like that cottage. Quite like this fella. Some sort of mouse shrew type thing. But if I put him that far down, I can't really. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'll show you. I'm going to put him on there. I'm just going to ink around him a little bit. Just so he stands out a little bit. Everything else we've got is inked, so we'll keep with the theme. Shaz with us today. Um, I haven't I'm seen her name. Seen her. She's probably quite busy with five pups. I was wondering when I cut this out where on earth I was going to find it was tall enough for for this uh, long sort of, I don't know what it is, bluebell or something like that. But it'll fit perfectly on here. And yeah, you know, I'm going to have to chop off a little bit on this side, but that's okay. So I'm going to put him there. I'm going to have to lose the tip of that, but that's all right. That is okay. Right, so I'm going to glue him on. And I'm going to use Aileen's tacky glue for that. What's anybody saying? I can't read. I can't do this. Um, a lot of people are saying they'd love one on Wednesday. Oh, right. Okay. Regina was asking what the name of the book was, so I've told her. Oh, good. They are available in this country uh, as used copies uh, via Amazon. So I don't know if you've got... I mean, it's a British book, that's the problem. But it is blinking lovely. But obviously you can use any book that... Yeah, use any book you like. Not use a book at all. Well, yeah, at one stage I was contemplating not using any book because I couldn't bring myself to cut into it. Right, so pop him there. And that there. Stick it down. Should we get all the pointy bits down? I have there missed a little bit and there and there 
there you go oh he's so nice this little creature whatever he may be right he'll make more sense i think when we get everything else in the book and there's more sort of nature around um but he's, he's looking nice so i'm just going to cut off the bits that uh, are sticking out because they look nice at the moment but in time they'll just get bent and then they won't look nice i don't think that's of any use to us So there we are, but he looks a little bit kind of uh, under adorned for our book. Because <laughs> now I've lost my blooming pin, for heaven's sake, here it is. Because um, everything's got to be like OTT. Or, or it's not good enough. If it's not OTT, it's just not enough. So before Wednesday, what I'll do is I'll run through some more um, tags playing by myself. Um, so when we come back on Wednesday, we can get on with decorations and pockets and stuff. This glue now doesn't want to come out. That's it. There we are. Right. All my hard work putting it in. There we go. Uh, this needs backing. It's not thick enough on its own to, to be one of my tags. I like my tags to be really thick. So I'm going to use some of that thick card um, to back it with. I think this might, I think it might be one six. I think it might even be the thick card, but it's not thick enough for my liking. So I'm going to back it again onto some of this. Thanks for the message a lot. Uh, one side's coffee stained, the other isn't, so I need to stick it onto the non-coffee stained side. There we are. I will be sewing round this. Of course, it's up to you whether you sew round yours or not. It's absolutely, absolutely up to you. That wants to curl the other way. Extreme pressure. That's, it's not sticking really well that, but I, I am gonna sew it and it, you know, we're running really late now. So um, I'll just pretend it's stuck. No, I'll, I'll sew it. Before Wednesday, this will be sewn up, looking lovely. I'm just going to show you what else I'm going to do to it. So as maybe if you want to, you can uh, put, put them, do what I'm doing now onto some of your cards. I may also, uh, incidentally, put the two roundels that I showed you at the beginning, the robin and the red squirrel. If you didn't see that, I'll show you again in a sec uh, and what we're gonna do with them. Right, so like I say, that's not stuck very well to that backing card, but you know, for the purposes of this, let's pretend it is. So I'm gonna get my, uh, my crocodile. Before I had a crocodile, guys, I just had an ordinary hole punch lasted me for years it's still going strong actually um it's just i got fancy on myself <laughs> well mr fix it got fancy on me one day this just arrived in the post so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put two holes in it i'm just going to make a mark where i want the holes to be does this work i don't think it's the one that doesn't work so that book's expensive in the i bet it is i bet it's horrendously expensive so i'm going to make one hole there and one hole here. They look about right. Maybe up a, bit, a little bit. I actually know now. Um, so that's the small size. I want the large size. 
hole and just go in where I've marked it and in there where I've marked that one. That's all I want for that for the time being. And I'm just going to get some sari silk. Um, I could use green. I've got green. Green would look nice. Or I also have cream, which I think might look nicer. I've also got twine and string and whatever. Use what, what you've got, what you like, what you think looks good and what's in keeping with your uh, project. So I just need to push that through from behind. And cut off a bit that I think is going to make a nice bow. I'll cut it off there. It might be too much, but it'll always come in on the snippet roll anyway, if nothing else. Put that through. There we are. Just tie a nice bow there. And if the fact that these um, ends aren't going to stay where you put them and it's going to annoy you, like it might annoy me, then just put a, a dab of glue on them to get them to stay where you want them to be. So there we go, guys. What do you think? Do you like it? I think I need to put some ink on here. It's The background's white and it's... Just a bit too white for my liking. Use some Demolts, Jacobo polish stuff that knocks it back, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a, an interesting point there. Actually, I'll, I'll maybe just tell you about yeah, that. I was just asking what color thread you would use. Well, I had a discussion about this yesterday, Deborah, and I chose to use peach for no other reason than um, the avocado dyed bandage that I've got is peach coloured and I knew that would be figuring quite a lot in in my journal so it's this colour so a light rust I guess you'd call it a peachy pink so that's the colour of thread that I opted to go for and I've sewn all around my um, signatures with that as well and I'm going to continue with that I like it it's maybe not the the best choice maybe green would have been a lot better I'm not sure um, maybe if I was starting again, I'd do green. I don't know, but uh, I'm doing peach. That's what I'm doing. So there we are. That's that one. Uh, and we got another one, didn't we? Yeah, this one with the hair on it. But he still needs some decoration around this bottom part. He needs some um, serious snippet going on there. So... The, oh, I was going to show you something. What was I going to show you? The Tim Holtz, yes. Hello. Where is it? I don't know what it is. It like. It's a little pot. Oh, so it's just getting ridiculous now. There it is. This stuff here. I can't see where it is. Forward. Stop. That's it. Distress Collage Medium, okay? okay? It's a Ranger Tim Holtz thing. Now, it comes in, in, in white, which dries clear, and it also comes in this, this colour. And as I discovered the other day, when you use it for decoupage, I'll just show you quick, quick, if I can find the one with a fox on it. Where's my deck? Where's the one with the fox? Here, that no. I've got some decoupage here with a fox in it. Oh, maybe I haven't. Is it upstairs or? I don't know, I had it yesterday. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Um, so I just want to show you the difference that that makes to ordinary stuff. Uh, to the ordinary stuff that we'd normally use. So on this uh, tag that we've already put some decoupage on, I'm going to put this little foxy, a little foxy fella. 
Um, and bear in mind that the background is white. Here, the background of him is white. And just see the difference that it makes. And then you can see that you may wish to use it at some time or other, but at least you'll know what it is. I had it for ages before I used it. Um, and I didn't really know, I couldn't understand what it was. But I tried it and I absolutely loved it. So I'm just going to put this little foxy face down here. Allow room for something to go along there, like that little snippet thing that we had. It's now disappeared on me again. Um, something like that. Not this, because that, that kind of goes that way. But it's a similar sort of snippet could go along there. So I want to leave room for that. And we'll just put the little foxy foxy features in there and you'll see what I mean. So I've hardly used it. I just I just discovered it yesterday. So same same procedure, just a little bit. Debbie's just going. Oh, see you Debbie. Thanks so much for joining me. See when you put it on. It goes, it goes like vintage. In fact, that's what it's called. It's called vintage. And it just, it's amazing. It's amazing. I love it. So there we are. That's my last pearl of wisdom for today. Um, an hour and a half, blimey. So there we are. It's now so much darker than than he was it's really knocked him back knocked him into the into the tag so there we are you've got some homework to do um you can you can cut up a book or not cut up a book it's entirely up to you there's a nice little tag to go into somewhere um a pocket that we'll be making soon um there's this one it needs finishing off with some um, a nice bit of, I don't know, something along there. Maybe a little bit of gathered fabric or something along there. And then there's this one and this one. And they're all to finish off. So if you can get up to that kind of stage and maybe make some more if you've got a mind to do it, uh, then we'll start on the pockets on Wednesday. And might actually even get something put in the journal, who knows? For those of you who weren't with us yesterday, let's just have a quick, quick, quick recap of what's going on so as you can uh, catch up. You can always watch the first part. It's uh, up on my YouTube channel, of course, so you can watch it if you want to. Um, this is one, one of the signatures. This is the other signature. And we literally just sorted out the papers that we wanted, um, stamped and stenciled randomly through it, put a bit of that in, some stencils, um, through both. Then I sewed around all mine uh, and I put lace on four edges. So as when they're together like that, they look really nice. Same with the other one. So if you get all that done, you're, you're up to date, but don't they look nice? I think so. Okay, I'll catch you then on Wednesday. I'll announce the time later on because I'm not sure what time I'll do it at. Uh, I know two o'clock suits us really well, but it might be better to maybe try and do one later. I don't know. We'll see. I'll announce it on Tuesday what time I'm going to do it on Wednesday. I'll put it up for two so I can create the stream, but it yeah. may change. Yeah. Okay. I can't create a stream without a time. Right, okay, but you could put it up on Wednesday, on Tuesday, couldn't you? I uh, could, but yeah. Yeah, what, whatever. No I, people have got the I will announce uh, on Facebook on Tuesday what time it's going to be, and Mr. Fixit will create the event for you on YouTube so as you can be here and not miss a thing from the start. Thanks so much, all of you, for joining me. Really, it's been fabulous. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying making this journal, I'm enjoying showing you new things maybe that you didn't know and new toys <laughs> let's call them toys because basically that's what they are 
So I'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks very, very much. Have a lovely time until then. Uh, be safe. Thank you. Bye.